I'm currently working on starting a new custom car audio build here on the channel. The goals for this system is I want it to be compact. I want to achieve incredible sound quality in the factory speaker locations. I want to retain the use of the factory head unit. And I want to do all this with the gear cost being under $4,000. Now in the previous videos, we covered the gear selection process and we did the math to determine our wire sizes. And now all of our gear has shown up, so we need to unbox everything and see what we've got to work with. Even if you don't have the same vehicle as what we're planning on putting all of this gear into, I want to give you guys some insight on why I chose this gear for this vehicle because that might give you some ideas for a future project. In particular, wait until you see how these subwoofers right here are capable of achieving massive bass in a very small space. All right, so let's grab our first item out of the box. Here we have our C2 component speakers. Now you'll notice that these are the C2 600s. This is the six inch model of the C2s. Actually the six and a half inch C2s that I plan on getting are currently on back order. So I'm gonna have to wait on those, but luckily I just happen to have these on hand already so that I can show you guys an up close look. So this is a component set. So we have the woofer and then we have the tweeter and then we also have the passive crossover that's going to divide our single channel into two different outputs to connect to these two different speakers. The reason we went with the C2 speakers is these aren't going to blow our budget and these are an exceptional speaker for the value. Additionally, since we wanna use these in the factory vehicle locations, these don't have a huge mounting depth, which means we're going to be able to use these with more of a bolt-in type application. I also wanted to make sure that I picked a smaller tweeter just because the factory tweeter grill on the door for the tweeter is relatively small. So this is a three quarter inch silk dome tweeter. I'll probably have to do a little bit of custom bracket design for the tweeter itself, but because it is so small, it's going to be a lot easier to fit in that factory location. You may be wondering if you are planning a custom car audio system, how do you know what speakers are going to properly fit ahead of time? And this is a good segue into a quick message from our show sponsor, Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, you can enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle. And if they've researched your vehicle, you can see exactly which speakers will fit. Not only that, Crutchfield will also let you know which exact speaker adapters you need to get to mount the speakers in different locations in the vehicle. And oftentimes with qualifying purchases, they will also include these. The same goes for the speaker wire harnesses. If those are available, we can avoid cutting the factory harnesses and reuse these aftermarket plugs to plug in our new speakers. If you'd like to learn more about Crutchfield and save on your next purchase, be sure to check out the links down in the video description. Next up, we have our rear set of speakers. And for this, we went with the JL Audio C1-650CX. So this is a coaxial set of six and a half inch speakers. Get these out of the box here. So these being a coaxial speaker means that they have both the woofer and the tweeter mounted together. This is a two-way type speaker. With the injection molded mineral filled polypropylene cone and rubber surround, these are gonna be good and reliable and they also have excellent off axis performance which will be great for the rear doors. These will be perfect for providing rear fill in the back of the vehicle. Next up, we have the item that's really gonna tie the whole system together and that is the amplifier. Ugh, right here, the VX1000 slash 5i. Let's get this bad boy opened up. So this five channel full system amplifier does 75 watts times four at four ohms or 100 watts times four at two ohms. And then it has an additional subwoofer channel that does 400 watts at four ohms or 600 watts at two ohms. The secret sauce behind this amplifier though is that it has a digital signal processor built in. By having the DSP inside, we're able to fully control the time alignment, equalization, crossovers, and all the different settings for every output channel of this amplifier. And it even has a set of preamp outputs that we can control if we ever want to expand the system in the future. We chose this amplifier because it will power the whole system in this one compact package. In fact, if you're looking for an even more compact solution, this amplifier has a little brother that is called the 700 slash 5i. It just has less output on the subwoofer channel. Nevertheless though, compact design and also that DSP integrated feature is going to allow us to make this system sound amazing. 
And with 600 watts RMS on the subwoofer channel, this is definitely going to get our subwoofers move in. That's right, subwoofers, plural. Even though we're going with a compact design, I've got two different subwoofers here inside this box that we're gonna take a look at in a second, but we also need to talk about how we're going to get signal into this amplifier. To get signal into this amplifier, we're going to be using this special harness right here. This is one of the new LPH harnesses from PAC Audio. This harness is an integration T harness. If you remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about how we want to retain the factory head unit. By using this harness, we can retain the factory head unit by simply unplugging the factory connection. We're going to plug it in here, and now these connections will plug into our stock head unit. But what this does is this allows us to sever the connection between the factory head unit and the speakers. By severing this connection, what we're able to do is send signal out of the factory head unit back to our processor and our DSP controlled amplifier. Once we do all the magic in the processor and in the DSP, we're able to send the new amplified signal back through our factory speaker wiring to all of the speaker locations. Now, a quick side note, if you're wondering about the integrity of sending an amplified signal back through the factory wiring, I definitely recommend that you go back and check out the video before this one for this build log series where we talk about planning all of the wiring for the build. The advantage of using a T-harness like this is we're not cutting any of the factory wiring. We don't have to track down what each of the wires is because this harness has it figured out for us. If we ever want to return the vehicle back to stock, we can simply unplug these connections and plug them back into the factory head unit and take this out of the signal path. And this harness also gives us some different options. If we were wanting to keep the factory speakers powered by the factory head unit, we could do so and still grab signal for something like a line output converter if we were only adding a subwoofer. The other nice little option it gives us is this power harness here so we can easily tap in and get 12 volt signal for ignition, constant, and ground, which we could send to one of our processors. Obviously, we wouldn't be powering our amplifier with these small little wires. Again, if you wanna see my full plans for how I'm going to run all the electrical for this system, go back and check out that previous video. A quick side note too, if you're wondering what this separate bag is here, this is an extension harness because obviously if this is up at the front of the vehicle, this isn't going to reach back to the trunk area. So with the extension harness, that just extends all of these wires here back to wherever we are mounting all of the gear. Now, another item that is handy to have are these right here. These are the audio control AC-LGDs. LGD stands for load generating device. So a lot of times with a factory head unit, if you're tapping into it to get the signal and you're not having the factory speakers still be connected to it, a lot of the factory head units don't like that and they'll automatically turn off that output or they'll have other weird audio issues. By using a load generating device in between whatever you're sending the signal to and the factory head unit, you're able to basically simulate that a speaker is still connected. So basically these help to stabilize that output to make sure that we get the best results. Now, unfortunately, another item that is currently on back order, I mentioned it a couple of times, a processor, and that is a correction processor that I'm gonna have between the head unit and the aftermarket amplifier, and that's a JL Audio Fix 86. That's going to correct the factory signal prior to sending it to the DSP amplifier, which is recommended by JL Audio. That way you have more processing capability in the amplifier itself just for fully tuning the system. Now remember I mentioned that we're gonna have two subwoofers for this build and they are in this box, so let's get these out. Ooh, what's this right here? A pretty thin looking box, even though it's a nice large subwoofer, that's because this is a JL Audio 12 TW3. So a 12 inch subwoofer, but shallow mount. Ah, there's nothing like that new subwoofer smell. So these right here, the 12 TW3, you can see 12 inch subwoofer, plenty of cone area. These have plenty of excursion capability as well, but look at that mounting depth. Super shallow, which is perfect for our application because we don't wanna be using a ton of trunk space in the trunk of this vehicle. We wanna keep it nice and shallow, even though the subwoofers are going to be mounted like this, firing to the rear of the vehicle. 
But with that shallow mountain depth there, we're not gonna need to take up much room. And you'll also notice on the back side of these, there's no pull vent. All of the venting occurs through the side of the subwoofer here. So we don't have to leave any space behind this subwoofer. In fact, we could have a board right up against the back of this if need be. So these subwoofers are rated at 400 watts RMS each. So with us using 600 watts of power at two ohms on the amplifier, we're gonna be perfect within the power band that is recommended for these subs. The particular model that I have here is the dual eight ohm version. So these are dual voice coil subwoofers, dual eight ohm voice coils, which is going to allow me to run all of the connections in parallel and achieve a two ohm load at the amplifier. What's really always impressed me about the TW3 subwoofer though is how little air volume it requires. We're gonna be running these in a sealed application, but this particular subwoofer only needs one cubic foot per subwoofer in a sealed enclosure. So we're obviously going to have a two cubic foot enclosure for the pair here, but again, that is very small and going to require very little room within the trunk. If you were to go with the 10 inch model of these, I believe the sealed volume needed then drops down to 0.6 cubic feet, which is super small. And for these here, if you did want to go ported, I'm looking at the manual here, you would need 1.3 cubic foot per subwoofer tuned to about 31 Hertz. Nevertheless, running two of these that each have an effective piston area of 83 and a half square inches combined with the linear one-way excursion of 0.6 inches, these are going to be providing us with a ton of output for this particular compact application. The other really cool feature on these is if you do have an application where you know this is going to be mounted somewhere that it could be exposed to potentially being damaged, it's really easy to get one of these grills that are sold separately you can take this and you can carefully press fit it down into the trim ring here and this is going to protect this subwoofer. We of course also have a couple of other random goodies like this. This is a DRC100. This is a controller for the DSP amplifier. It allows us to change between different tunes and presets that we set up on the amplifier. It also allows us to control the level of whatever we want it to. We could have it do a fade or we could have it control the overall system level. In our case here, we'll probably be using it to control the level of the subwoofers themselves. So question of the episode for you guys. I always love getting feedback from the community. What is your dream piece of car audio gear? What is one item that you've always wanted to own or maybe you've achieved that goal and now own. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let us know down below. Next time you're choosing speakers for a car audio build, don't forget to check out the benefits of using our show sponsor, Crutchfield. You guys can learn more and save some money at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry, Joseph, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And of course, thank you guys for tuning in and watching.